Hello and welcome to a video. Today we are going to be taking a look at this little guy that I designed, going through what it does and seeing if it works. So first off, um, my name's Alex or Poetaster on the internet and I think this is just going to be kind of a one-off video and I do just want to say up front that PCBWay actually reached out to me to see if I had any upcoming projects that they could uh, lend some free boards to. So full disclosure, I did get these boards for free. I did uh, take the opportunity to try out their Flex PCBs. And even though I haven't tested my design yet, I have to say it's, it's really cool. I knew they would be bendy and flexible, but um, I guess I didn't realize just how flexible these Flex PCBs are. So I think this is going to be the perfect form factor for what I'm trying to do here. So yeah, just wanted to be super upfront about that since it's not something I normally do, um, but really appreciate PCBWay for reaching out and for providing these. So first thing before we jump into it, let's talk about what this thing is and what it's supposed to do. Um, so this is a glitch camera that I designed back before I had a stroke and couldn't use my left hand super good. Basically you have two switches and two knobs. The switches change the glitch set on each of the corresponding knobs and each knob controls two glitches at a time. So basically you get a set of eight adjustable glitches. As you can see as I turn this knob towards the center it gets pretty normal but then as I push it toward either extreme you can see it's getting some uh, kind of funky pixelation there. Once I turn it back this way I get all sorts of wild green and rainbow colors. And basically there's a, yeah, a total of eight different glitches like that. And I'll take a moment here to show some photos I've taken with this uh, glitch camera design. And we'll talk a little bit more about that design and I'll share the schematics and how it all works uh, later on in the video. Back to this PCB, this is a flexible PCB that I designed to try to make circuit bending cameras much easier, or at least this kind of camera. And just as a... And full disclosure, this is the first time I've had a, a video like this, but uh, PCBWay actually reached out to me about doing a project using some of their PCBs. And this is the project that jumped to my mind, was wanting to try out flex PCBs and see if um, I could put something together so I could get back to bending these cameras. Um, so long story short, this basically breaks out the various bend points on this camera. And instead of trying to solder to these itty bitty points, it gives us through hole solder points that are much easier to manage, especially um, with only the one hand. So what we'll do is we're going to try to attach this to the camera, test it out to make sure it works, and um, just bear in mind this is still a prototype. So if there's anything cool you see that you think would uh, work great for any of your projects or something you'd like to try out, definitely let me know. Uh, same goes for if there's something you think of that would be really cool to add to something like this. Um, I'd definitely love to hear about it. Um, obviously, we've got to find out if it works first, but I think it would be cool to have these in the shop eventually. And for anyone who's wondering why would circuit bending cameras be hard, I'm just going to show you all real quick. I've got my handy microscope here, and you can see even under a microscope, these points are uh, pretty small. Um, you can see there's the tip of my itty bitty tweezers there. And normally to bend these you have to solder, um, I believe it's five different wires onto these little points. So just to talk about the PCB a little bit, here I've got all the individual points broken out. And then over here on the right, these are the specific wiring points for that design I showed earlier in the video. And again, I'll share a full schematic later as we go on. 
but these are just easy wiring points to hook up the two switches and two knobs from that design. So all that said, let's see if we can figure out how to attach this thing. After a good bit of ado, I have figured out how to attach this. The trick was to heat up both the board here alongside the um, uh, Flex PCB. And I did that by mounting my hot air gun so that I could put both pieces under it. I used a really wide mouth. I actually just took all the diverters off and just left it wide open um, to heat as much of the area as possible. I also taped the back connector on that holds on the original camera module. That way it didn't fall off um, like I had happen once when I was trying this. I also ran it at a relatively low heat. I think I was using, you know, 275, something like that on my, my heating station. That's pretty low to get everything melted and generally in place. And that didn't quite have it all the way on. So what I did is I was able to place it at that low heat working over a long period of time. And then when I was happy with the placement, what I did was let it cool and then use just these grippy tweezers to clamp both that connector in the back and the flex PCB in place. And then I hit it with um, a higher heat. Still pretty low. I think I went up to 325 and that just made sure I melted all the solder connections together and had everything nice and tidy. And that seems to have done the trick. So let's test it out and I can show you all what this guy does. As I've mentioned before, this is a breakout board for a design that I've done and I'll share the schematics for that design. And I'll just put my gooby face here at a very flattering angle. Um, hello. And as you can see, I can still use the camera as normal. It works to take photos. As I mentioned before, this section of the Flix PCB breaks out all of the pins so that you can experiment. Whereas these pins are for the design that I already have and will be sharing. So to demonstrate some of those glitches, I'm just going to use a little clip here to clip to that contact. Now you can see I get like a crazy kind of rainbowy um, effect, kind of green grainy. Here we get kind of like a pasteurization, pas pas not pasteurization, pasteurization. This one gives a similar kind of 
blur effect to kind of lo fi fi things. And because I always found it annoying, um, when circuit bending cameras, you'd get like a really cool effect and then you would go to take a photo and lo and behold, it was gone because you were just glitching the screen. I just want to demonstrate that I'm going to take that photo that's all blues and purples. Um, you may notice with a lot of these glitches, um, I have noticed with the design I came up with at least, um, it does take longer to save them, but it will eventually save them. So now if I go back to the playback, you can see the actual image that it saved is what's glitched because we're directly modifying this camera module's connections with this breakout board, all of that will get saved to the actual image. I will throw a little schematic up on the screen and um, just kind of pause for a moment. So that's my basic design for glitching these kids' cameras. I really like it because it gives you, you know, eight possible glitches without really changing the package. Again, here's a sample of, uh, this is my personal one that I keep for myself. Um, cause you've got a glitch at either end of the knob. So that's four glitches. And then when you toggle the switch, it changes the two glitches. Um, so yeah, a total of eight different glitches, and because they're attached to potentiometers, you can actually adjust the intensity. Here for our test, I just did a direct short, so this is the highest possible intensity, but this will let you add like a little bit of resistance so you can kind of vary what the actual glitch looks like. So I think this breakout flex PCB is a big success, personally. Now I did have a really tricky time getting it on there, but I think that's because I had no idea how to do it and I was trying to do it one-handed. I think if you were trying to do this two-handed and you could just hold a hot air gun in your left hand and the, you know, maneuver these two pieces with your right, I think that would make it a lot easier. And once I did figure it out, it wasn't hard at all. It was just a little time consuming because I was trying to work really slow with low heat make sure I didn't burn anything up or separate any of the components on the back of the board. But genuine question, um, y'all don't have to pad my ego, but what do y'all think? Would this make life easy? Would you, you know, if you have been to camera, would you change and use one of these instead? Or if you've never been to camera, would this make it easier, you think, and you'd be willing to give it a shot? And then lastly, would you, uh, would you pay 10 to 15 bucks for one of these? Um, again, you don't have to pad my ego. I think it's a neat design, but generally just testing out whether it's something I should keep refining with the goal of putting it up in the shop for folks to also use, or if it's just, hey, this was a neat project, but, um, you know, not really viable for how much it would cost, wouldn't really, you know, be worth it or is it a case where it wouldn't really be worth it for the cost um, it doesn't save enough effort let me know in the comments what you all think um, because yeah if this seems like something folks would like i could definitely get that added into the store and again a huge thank you to pcb way for providing the pcbs i used to make this video and the prototypes um, really impressed with how flexible these flex pcbs are and uh, how quick they were able to get those turned around. So all that said, thank you all so much for tuning in. And um, as always, uh, it's really appreciated whenever folks like the videos, subscribe, leave comments, all that stuff helps drive traffic to the channel. So it ends up being a tremendous help. Um, so thank you to those of you who already do that and um, a preemptive thank you for anyone who does that after this video. I do uh, really appreciate it. And as a very tiny channel, I do see when those things come in and it, it means a lot. I really appreciate it. And finally, I know this was just a quick demo, but I think what I'm going to do is down the road, I'm going to make a circuit bending super show episode where I'm going to pick this video up. Basically, I'm going to take this board, um, kind of where I've left this video off and take it through the final stages to have the complete camera put together. So, 
look forward to that in the future. If it's already the future, I'll put a link to that Super Circuit Bending Super Show episode down in the description so you can check it out. Okay, I think that covers everything I wanted to say about this one. So once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.